everyone, it's Ashley with Creative Fabrica, ready with some fresh creative insights just for you. Today's video, we are going over my top five tips for using Studio. I can't wait to get started, so let's head over to my computer. Tip number one is utilizing your layers panel. There's a lot of different things that you can do in the layers panel to really help your design process. One thing you can do is lock. For instance, the watercolor layer that I have is in the background. And sometimes when you're moving around elements, you can get stuck and accidentally select the wrong thing. By locking a layer, it makes it to where you cannot move that layer until you unlock it again. Something else that's really helpful is being able to move an element in the layers panel and moving its position in that way. So I'm taking the name Charlotte and I'm moving it all the way to the top. This is significantly helpful, especially when you're doing things like shadows. For instance, let's say I wanted to add a shadow to the name Charlotte. I would just copy the name Charlotte, turn the name black, reduce the transparency down, and now I need to move the name behind. So I will grab the name and I will move it behind. Now I can easily just grab and nudge into the correct spot. After you have made your design, or maybe even during your design, you'll notice that your layers panel is really full and it can get a little disorganized. One way of keeping things organized is grouping things together. Let's say that I wanted to group all the elements together. We can do this by selecting the bottom layer, holding the shift key down, and then selecting the top layer. This selects every single element in between, and then I can group. Now we have a much more tidy layers panel. Tip number two is using the color picker effectively. You can use the color picker to basically choose any any color that you can see. As you can see, I'm selecting the mermaid here, going up to the color picker tool, and I can just select the background, and it automatically changes the mermaid to the same color as the background here. I can also select the eyedropper tool and grab a color from within my logo. But my favorite way to use the color picker tool is to create my own palettes that I use within my design. I do that by uploading an image that I love. For instance, this one that I chose for Google. I love the colors in it, and I wanna be able to use these colors within my design that I'm creating. So what I do is I will grab the image, put it within my canvas, and then I will go over to elements, down to circles, and I will grab however many colors there are within my design. So in this case, there's four different colors within this design that I want to use in my color palette. So I'll grab four circles. I'm going to grab the first one, go up to my color picker and select the teal shade. Next, we'll do it again, but for the pink. Again, for this cream color. And then finally, we'll do it again for this yellow shade. Now I can get rid of this picture and I can grab all of my circles together, group them, shrink it down, just so that they're a nice little palette up in the corner that I can reference and I will then lock it. Now, when I want to use these colors within my design, they're up here, but they're out of the way. So I could just simply grab my color picker tool, grab my eyedropper, and turn them whatever color I would like because my palette is always right here. Before I export my design, I will go ahead and select that layer, unlock, and then delete. Tip number three is utilizing the built-in patterns in Studio. You could do that by clicking on patterns on the left hand side. We're going to use this cute cherry pattern for today's example. I'm just going to tile this by clicking on repeat background. Perfect. Now I like to add different elements. So from here, I'll go over to the element section, scroll down and click on a basic circle shape. I'm going to put that towards the center and align it up with the guides. Now I'm going to change this color to a white color, but I want it to match the color within the design. So I'm going to select the eyedropper tool and then select this white color here. It's a little bit off white, not a perfect white. Awesome. Now I'm going to go up to graphics and search for a glitter element. We're going to go with glitter gold. This one's perfect. It's already that circle shape that we like. So now I'm just going to layer that on top there. Make it down just a little bit. There we go. And now let's go ahead and add some text. I'm going to go ahead and click on heading and then type in a name. We'll use the name Megan. Now let's go ahead and change the font type. That's a pretty font. And we'll make that just a bit bigger. And we'll move that over. That's really cute. So let's go ahead and change the color to a nice light pink. There we go. And then let's make it pop with a nice border. And we'll do the border a little bit deeper pink. Okay, that turned out pretty cute. 
Now, if I wanted to add some more elements, I could, let's say, go back to elements, scroll down, maybe choose the rectangle, maybe give it a nice stripe. Let's say we're making this for a tumbler. Now, this might not be the appropriate dimensions, but let's just pretend that they are the right dimensions and we want to add a little bit more to the design to make it more our own. So one way to do that would be to add different types of shapes, like making it more have like this band effect. And we could do a green. We could even add some golds. Make this one a little bit thinner. We could change this color to maybe this deeper shade here. And we could shrink this one down. And then maybe we could even put another one right here something like that. So this could end up being a really cute tumbler design. Tip number four is using the background removal tool for more than just getting rid of the white space. The background removal tool is so awesome because it has a way of knowing what is the main object that you're trying to keep and what you're trying to get rid of. All I have to do is select the image, click on the background removal tool, and now I just have the astronaut. So I can use just the astronaut in another way within the design. I could choose to, let's say, make it look like he's sliding out of the galaxy, right? So we can put this behind and then arrange him in a way where he looks like he's sliding. So we can take him and move him like this. And now he's sliding out of the Milky Way. You can do this in a lot of different ways. Let's do one more just to show you how fun this can really be. So here we have this bear. Let's just go ahead and make him larger. Beautiful, beautiful bear. And we're going to remove the background. Now we have just our bear. Now let's go ahead and add this beautiful eagle scene of the eagle soaring above. And we're going to put this behind the brown bear. Perfect. Now let's align this just a bit and now we've combined two different beautiful nature graphics into one beautiful illustration tip number five is using the built-in photos you can do a lot with the photos especially a lot in image manipulation this is one area that i find to be one of the most fun for our example today we're going to be utilizing a picture of a dog and all i did was type in dog up at the search i selected this photo here and we're going to make it look as if he's seeing his reflection in the window. All we have to do is copy and then paste. We need to flip the image. So we're gonna use that by flipping vertically. Now it appears that the dog is looking the other way. Next, we need to remove the background of this image here. And we do that by just clicking background removal. When that happens, sometimes you'll notice that your image looks like it's cut off, but it's not. Just double click and you'll see the rest of your image appear. So now we just have to maneuver the image exactly where we would like it. So I'm gonna put his reflection right about here. I'm gonna double click it so that I can see the rest of the image. And now I'm going to be moving this over so that I can make sure that I can see the entire image. There we go. From here, I'm just going to click off and now we have a dog staring at himself basically, but now we need to lower that transparency down so that it looks more like a reflection in the window. So I'm gonna go up here to transparency, and just reduce it to where it looks as if he's looking at his reflection. I'd say right about there. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's tips. If you did, please let us know what your favorite one was down below. Before you head out, make sure to hit the like, subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell so that you get notified every single time we post a video. Thank you so much for being part of our Creative Fabrica family, and we'll see you guys in the next video.